um, I was looking for something that both had scale, and, and, and so I was largely looking at how we impose systems on a landscape to control, re-divert, shape water. And so uh, large-scale um, you know, projects like dams, aqueducts, um, you know, irrigation in, in the desert to create great huge farms in the desert were all ways I can show that we're redirecting water as humans to, to an effect uh, and using industrial processes to get us there. So, um, and if you look at all of my work, it's always about the industrialization of the landscape, the, the machinery we use to go in there and change it to our benefit, whether it's a big mining operation, a big quarry operation, whether it's how we build our cities, uh, suburban expansion, you know, all these things are humans imposing, you know, their needs within the landscape, within nature. So. Water, I just treated the same way. So I looked at you know, dams, aqueducts, uh, industrial farming, using you know, pivot irrigation where we're drawing out groundwater or redirection of the Colorado River or natural types of farming where I went to China and showed um, terrace, terracing with, for rice. Uh, and that's been going on for 3,000 years. So that's an example of us working within a sustainable uh, envelope of, of water and food. Um, redirecting water, yes, we show California, but you know, the Ashwan Dam and the, the different dams in different parts of the world are also redirecting and irrigation is occurring. But you know, this is just you know, one example that happens to be within reach and accessible and you know, people are allowing us to go in there to film it. And so, th so it, th there's a practicality, there's a visual component, uh, and there's the reality of budget constraints. So it's a, it's a process of elimination. So you know, at first you start with hundreds of possibilities, and then you keep narrowing it down, and then you end up with you know with the 20 stories in the film. But we we're probably 100 when we started. So it's just like an editing process. It's constantly distillation to get to the point where the content and the form. You know, the visual and the ideas are equally balanced and, and, and are powerful and tell a story. Probably one of the most challenging shoots is, um, is when I decided that I wanted to photograph the fish farms in, in China. And so I had to work out, there's no helicopter space in China, you can't rent a helicopter, there's no civil aviation. And the only way to get up there is to work with the military helicopters and, and they're not very prone to it and they have huge helicopters and if you want to do it it's still possible but you're going to pay you know, like huge amounts of money and they, they're going to give you one window and if it either works or it doesn't and that's it so if the weather's bad sorry so sad still give us all the money and i'm sorry you didn't get a shot you're done so how do you kind of get that aerial perspective and be flexible enough so i had to start to develop a whole way of thinking and then we ended up at, you know, through the whole process of elimination, we do hot air balloons, tried that, didn't work. Uh, tried uh, a pole, was not high enough, but for certain things it was high enough. Eventually it was a remote helicopter with uh, my Hasselblad, big enough to run my Hasselblad, with a, you know, a video signal coming from the eyepiece so I can actually control it left, right, down. So I'm framing from a thousand feet, you know, and shooting with my Hasselblad, uh, a, a frame uh, th that, you know, so, so to get that shot, it, it was two years in development uh, and trying to resource, find resources and people who can actually help me do that. And then we brought all of them to China uh, to, to do that picture. So it's probably the most complicated picture I've ever taken.